Python is a great general purpose programming language on its own. So Python can be used for many things. Um, but with the help of NumPy, SciPy, and many other popular libraries that can be added to Python, it becomes a powerful environment for scientific computing. That means you can do almost anything that you want for scientific computing with PyPython. This tutorial will serve as a crash course on both the Python programming language and the use of Python for scientific computing. In the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to cover the uh, basics of Python, that is basic data types, um, containers, lists, um, dictionaries, tuples, functions, and classes. And in the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to cover NumPy um, and, and Matplotlib um, and others. So there are two versions of Python that are widely used, version 2 dot something and version 3 dot something. Version 2 is already um, out of uh, support, so uh, you will see version 3 dot something um, every um, any other place. Interestingly, Python 3 has introduced many backwards incompatible changes to the language. So that means that uh, the code that you wrote for Python 2.6 or if you if you happen to encounter any code or in the internet, if you find a code for written for Python 2.7, that code may not work under Python 3.4 or 3.6 and so on and, and vice versa. And you can check your Python version in a command line by issuing Python minus minus version and support for Python expired at the end of 2019. So we will deal with all Python 3. Um, now to check the version of your Python, you can run import um, platform and um, and um, print uh, py platform python underscore version. And uh, it looks like right now we are running the version 3.6.9. And um, in one difference, uh, one example difference between Python 2 and Python 3 is how the print statement is written. For example, um, in Python 2, a print statement did not necessarily need um, um, parentheses around the content, which means this statement would run in Python 3, but it doesn't run in, um, um, would run in Python 2, but doesn't run in Python 3. And um, uh, whereas Python 3 requires parentheses, so this runs in Python 3. Um, I think this also runs in Python 2 as well. So that's the uh, a, a sort of a note on the difference between Python 2 and Python 3. <clears throat> if you always work with Python 3 and, and, and uh, write Python 3 code, you never have to worry about um, Python 2. Python has um, many basic data types, and the first ones that we will look at are numbers. And um, the um, uh, integers and, and floating point numbers um, work as you expect in other programming languages as well. For example, um, in Python, when you create a variable and assign it a value, let's say three, then you can print the content by, um, by using the print parenthesis statement. Also, if you don't know the data type, you can also use the type um, keyword to uh, print the type of this um, data type. In this case, if we run this code, um, it says that the type is uh, uh, the type of x is int. Now I consider this um, this uh, keyword type as a as a tool that a programmer can use very frequently to check for errors, to debug, to fix errors, and so on. So um, you can think of type as a screwdriver. So anytime you see that your code doesn't run according to how you expect, then you can use type to debug and check the the data type of the variables that you are working with. Um, similar to other programming languages, plus acts as addition um, and um, double asterisk acts as exponenti exponentiation. So if x is 3, then x plus 1 would be 4, minus 1 would be uh, 2, x is squared would be 9, um, x into 2 would be 6, and x to the power 2 would be 9. And um, um, similarly, the, the plus equals to operator adds 1 to x and um, times 2 operator multiplies x by 2. So you can expect that this will print x as um, uh, 3 plus 1, 4, and this will print, um, change the value of x to uh, um, 4 times 2 will be 8. So this would print 8. Um, similarly, if you assign a floating point number to a variable, then Python will automatically detect that um, this is a floating point number and assign and make y um, a floating point type, and and you can print um, like you know, various changes to the to this number, and all the numbers will still be all floating point numbers. 
Um, one um, uh, unique difference between Python and many other languages is that Python does not have the unity operator, um, so plus plus and, and minus minus, so um, um, you cannot use this. You will have to either use um, x plus equals or x equals x plus one, etc. <coughs> Python also has a built-in type for long integers and complex numbers. Um, now this is a little bit tricky because Python 2 has the data type long, whereas Python 3 only has int, float, and complex types. So depending upon what value you assign to the variable, Python automatically creates a variable that is required for that type. For example, if I assign a really large number to, um, to a variable, then this can become of type int, no matter what's, what, 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 um, or how big a number I put it in. If I assign a floating point number, then the type automatically becomes a float. If I uh, assign a complex number, then the type becomes complex, and so on. So, and, and if I assign a string to a variable, then the type automatically becomes a string. So for example, if I put double single quotes around a, a text, then that becomes a string. So Python automatically recognizes that X is a <coughs> string now. And um, to confirm this, Python 2 has um, two integer types, int and long, whereas Python 3 only has int. So um, this code of converting x into a type long doesn't work in Python 3. Um, similar to many other programming languages, Python also has Boolean variables. Um, so um, if we wanted to create two variables, um, t and f, and assign true to t and false to f, this is how you can do it. And then if we print the type, this shows that, that both of those are um, a type bool. In this case, t is also the type boolean. And um, just, just like many other programming languages, we can perform um, operations, um, boolean operations on these boolean variables. For example, um, um, performing logical and can be done by the, using the keyword um, and, logical or using the keyword or, not using um, not, and um, logical XOR using um, um, not equals to. Um, Python also supports bitwise n and bitwise or. Um, now um, those who um, come from C, C++ background or the other programming languages where uh, and, um, a double and is used as an and operator, this can be a little bit confusing because Python uses a single ampersand operator and the pipe sign um, as a bitwise AND and OR operator, not as the logical AND and OR operator. So you will notice that even if you sometimes use ampersand and bitwise um, as, as AND and OR, your program will run fine, but there are times when you may observe problems. And here's an example. Say, for example, we would like to check if 0 is less than 1 and 0 is less than 2. And, and uh, in this case, we expect that um, this would return a true because 0 is less than 1 and 0 is also less than 2. Um, and uh, so this here, to cross-check, we have um, written this in two ways, one using the logical AND operator and using the bitwise AND operator. Um, intuitively, you would think that both of these will return true, but it doesn't. The first one returns false and the second one returns true. And the reason for this is because, in this case, um, the ampersand operator has um, higher um, precedence over the, uh, this um, comparison operator. And that's why it performs one and zero first and then does other things. So this is an example where you get an unexpected result when you use ampersand instead of and. Python has a lot of built-in methods and a lot of um, um, flexibility when dealing with the strings. We can create a plain string, um, a, string um, um, a, a normal string variable by um, assigning some um, fixed um, um, string to it by, by uh, um, um, say, um, putting single quotes around your content. We can also simply put double quotes around the content and create another variable. Python also allows you to create um, a string um, variable with um, um, triple uh, double quotes around the text. Um, now, with this, you can type anything that you want in between your um, um, hello learning Python. And um, without having to worry about how you write your paragraph, if you put um, these triple double quotes around your text, then Python 
um, saves everything as a single um, single string. So if we print um, hello, it's going to print the contents of um, the variable hello. And uh, if we print again, it's going to print the contents of this variable again with everything as it is intact. Uh, we can concatenate strings in Python by using the plus operator and uh, if we wanted to concat two um, words, say for example, as in this case, we can, um, if we wanted to add a space in between, then we can simply create another, um, um, like a you know, small string with a space in between. We can also print multiple variables um, at a time and Python separates them by a space in between. So I can put as many variables as I want here and um, 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 etc. and Python prints all of them uh, separated by a space. And um, we can also do formatted um, printing by using the ampersand um, sign and using um, this, um, so, so not, sorry, not ampersand, but this percentage sign. We can separate the formatted string um, in front of the print, uh, in the first part of the print statement. And then we use this percentage sign followed by parenthesis where you put all your variables. And uh, percentage 13s means that you want the content of this uh, variable hello uh, to be uh, printed in a space of 13 characters and percentage d means it expects a, a number there and so on so in this case it will print um, hello world um, both of them in a space of 13 characters width and uh, the content of um, uh, uh, the, the number 12 at the end Python 3 also supports something known as F strings um, because um, the formatted string approach is um, quite difficult to read. It's not very readable. Um, Python 3 supports F string where if you use the uh, character F in front of your string before you put, start your double quotes, then you can um, sort of embed all your variables in your string with this um, curly bracket. So this way, this will print, I want to say, whatever the content of this variable hello is and then to the world and the contents of this variable world. This is far more readable than the formatted um, uh, uh, printing style just like the C, C++ style and other programming languages have. If we want to concatenate um, um, say numbers and strings together then we need to com convert the numbers or the variables which are of type numeric using the uh, keyword str so that everything is a string and can be concatenated. Um, string objects, um, so all the variables that we create, which are by default string objects, um, have a bunch of useful methods. For example, Python comes with methods to capitalize, with capital, with cap, which capitalizes only the first um, letters um, of the of the words um, if we want to convert everything to upper character um, um, then uh, we use upper r adjust right justifies your string um, at a space that you specify in the um, in the um, uh, argument um, and um, center um, um, aligns your text at the center of the width that you specify um, with the argument that you pass um, you can also replace certain parts of the string, certain characters or phrases um, using the replace. Um, the strip um, method is very handy because it can be used to uh, trim whenever you're reading lines from a text file. Uh, it can be used to trim the leading and trailing white spaces, tabs, spaces, anything. And then another commonly used um, um, method, particularly when reading uh, files, is the split method that can split the text based on white spaces, automatically det detects um, multiple or single white spaces. So if, say, for example, in this case, the last output will be, um, um, since we are splitting it, this converts it into a list with the first item as hello, second item as class, third item as good, and fourth as evening. So if we print the first item and then the third item in this case, because the index starts with, uh, with zero, it's, go it's going to print hello and good at the end. Uh, Python includes several built-in container types, um, in particular lists, dictionaries, sets, and tuples. We will start with lists. A list is uh, the Python equivalent of an array, but um, it is resizable and can contain elements of different types. This is very tricky 
Um, because sometimes you may accidentally put a list inside a list or you can have a list where one of the items is floating point, others are string, others are numbers and so on. We can create a list by using the big brackets. Um, we can separate all the elements that we want to put in the list by comma and then we can use big brackets to create a list. So this creates a list with four items in it. And um, if we, we can print the entire list and we can also print a specific element within the list. We can also um, um, count the elements or refer to the elements in the list backwards. Um, so ne negative indices usually um, uh, print the contents of the list from backwards. So um, and um, so minus one would be the first element from backwards. Minus two will be the second element from backwards, and so on. So x minus one prints the first element. Um, starting backwards and x minus 2 prints the second element is starting backwards. Um, like I said before, we can assign different um, types of data to various positions in a list. So I can, even though everything else is a number in x, um, I can assign this string foo to the third element in the list. So then this would print 3, 1, and because in the third element we inserted foo, this would be 3, 1, foo, and then 2. And um, we can add elements to the end of the list by using the append method. And uh, we can remove or um, return the last element of the list by using the pop method. So now what we popped out was a uh, um, bar because that was the last element in the list. And now the list has um, everything but bar. And um, Similarly, we can um, append, um, say for example, if we already have a list like this and I append another list to this list, let's see what happens. So what happened was we already had a list that went up to two and then when I did the append, it added a list, uh, the new list xs2 into the list by inserting it into the list as a list itself. In other words, this now is a list that has another list as one of its elements. And in this case, obviously, we did not want it. So um, um, if we want to extend a list to so that we, we merge two lists to make a third list, then we don't use the append um, method. We use something known as extend. So if we have a list, access another, let's say 100, 1000, and, and 200, that's the content. And if we want access, that is the current list to um, um, to have additional elements of the list as the contents of this access, then we use extend. So if you do access.extend access another, then this list gets, gets um, added to the list, not as the whole list becomes an element, but it becomes a continuous list with um, additional values in it. So this is something that's very tricky. You may sometimes accidentally use extend and append interchangeably. So um, this icon sort of reminds you to um, understand the difference between extend and append methods when working with lists. In addition to accessing elements once at a time, that is just the way we could access elements by using the index of the elements. Uh, Python provides um, concise syntax to access sublists, which is also known as slicing. Um, say, for example, um, now before we go get into that, there's um, a, a small difference between um, how um, range is handled in Python 2 and Python 3. So if I do nums equals range 5, this should give me a range of numbers starting from 0 to 4, starting from 0 all the way to 4. So if I print nums, that's what I will see. Um, now, in Python 3, the range function, instead of giving you a list of numbers, actually returns an iterator so that it becomes easier to implement it in for loops and, and, and so on. So um, um, if you are trying to copy a code or like run a code that's written in Python 2 that uses a range as a list, then that might not work in Python 3. So it's a little bit of a, um, of a caveat that you have to be careful about when using the, the range method. Um, so this is once again something to be um, careful about when you're working with Python 2 and Python 3. 
Um, so now going back to our um, um, topic of slicing. Say for example, we create an um, um, an array, um, a list um, with um, numbers ranging from zero to four. Then um, I can take slices out of this um, list. Um, say for example, I want a slice from the third element because two is this is the zero position is the first element, one is the second element, and two is the third element. Third element to the fourth element because from it will go the list will go from two to three because it doesn't go on to the last element so this is like chopping out or like you know accessing the element um, the subset two and three so um, um, the 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 maximum number that you specify anywhere in in Python um, is um, is exclusive so that number that index is not included Similarly, if you, I don't specify the second um, um, item in this uh, range, then it assumes that I want everything after the index two. So this will give you a, give me a slice that it starts from index two all the way to the end of the list. Similarly, if I don't specify the number in the front, then um, it gives me um, the subset or sub list starting from the beginning all the way to position two minus one. So two is exclusive, right? This means this is going to print give me um, up to index one. So this would be this will give me a, the subset would be zero and one. If I don't specify the first element and last element, it's gonna um, assume that I want from the beginning to the end. So this will give me a subset that is the entire set itself. And um, um, so once again, just like accessing the slices index can be negative. So what this means is. Um, since the, we don't have any starting index, but the um, but the second index or, or the last index is minus one. That means we want the the subset that goes from the beginning of the list to the end of the list exclusive, which means that we want a subset that goes from zero, one, um, two, and three, the first part except for the last one. Similarly. Um, we can um, insert, um, uh, assign a new sublist into a slice. In other words, if we wanted to insert 8, 8, 23, 56, 9, this, this new sublist into um, the list at position 2, then um, I can use, um, um, I, I, I can use, um, um, I can specify that by issuing um, where I want to insert into the list. So 2 um, colon. And if I print num, the list this new list will be inserted into my current list. So as you can see, um, from position two to position four, it has um, replaced, which is from zero one two three has been replaced with um, eight eight. Um, 23569 over here and everything else remains intact um, when accessing when when um, slicing from beginning to the last index minus um, last index from backwards it's going to give me a subset that it starts with um, zero all the way to the item the second last item <coughs> Um, writing for loops in Python is um, easy. You can loop over elements in a list like this. Say, for example, if I create a list of um, animals and say I only have three elements in the list, cat, dog, and monkey, then um, I can do, um, I don't need the iterator i here. Um, I can do for animal in animals, print animal, and this will print every animal in the list. Now, if we wanted to get the index of the element, then um, one obvious, um, like you know, sort of um, technique would be I create a variable called i equals zero, and then so that I can print the index as well. I do print um, uh, print i. I print the index, and if I wanted to um, um, say access the um, the index of the um, if I want to print the index at the same time, I can print 
um, animal and then uh, sorry animal and then also print the index at the same time in other words if I need an index sorry um, I also will have to increase I by one each time because um, um, otherwise um, I plus equals one then it's going to print the index and the, uh, the um, item in the list as well however um, in Python we, we, we should not be doing this we don't need to do this because um, um, we can use the enumerate um, method to um, um, to obtain or to access both the index and the item element in the list at the same time. So if I simply do um, for um, the name I want to give to the index and the name I want to give to the element in instead of just simply keeping animals, I put the word um, the keyword enumerate here. Then it's going to print the um, index and uh, the um, element at the same time. The next topic is uh, list comprehension. Um, and um, um, when working, when when writing programs, frequently what we want to do is transform data from one kind to the another, or like you know, um, transform data in a way where we are repeatedly um, doing the same thing for every item in a list and so on. Here's an example. Say, for example, we would we need to write a piece of code that computes the squares of numbers. So say we have a list like this that has um, numbers from 0 to 4, and then we would like to create on the list that has squares of um, the items in the, um, in the list nums. So, um, the the obvious technique would be for each item in nums we generate the square of that item and then append it to the new list of squares right and this will give us the squares um, however uh, python um, allows you to write the same thing implement it um, using something known as a list comprehension where you can specify what you want to do for each item in the list um, in a single line. So if we have the nums list, our input list, then we can simply do squares equals um, square x for each x in nums. So this, this shorthand for what we did here is list comprehension. So um, uh, depending upon, um, like, you know, uh, your... Uh, a need for a speed um, list comprehension code can also run faster than um, non-comprehended or a regular for loop code. What's interesting is if we have a more complicated scenario where um, we have conditions in um, involving um, such uh, a conversion or translation, then that can also be implemented into list comprehension. For example, if we wanted to square only, let's say, even numbers in our list, right, then um, we can repeat the same thing, x squared, for all x in numbers, if um, it is an even number. So this prints, um, this calculates the squares for all the numbers in nums, and um, and only um, saves or like you know extracts those numbers and only calculates the squares for those and puts it into even squares. So even squares is only going to print the squares of the even numbers in in num. And this is um, important because um, uh, many times when uh, we are studying list comprehension, if our requirement is something like this, then we easily um, use list comprehension. But as, as soon as we have conditions in our um, uh, in our um, data conversion, then we tend to switch back to our style of writing for loops, but we can actually um, extend list comprehension to um, include uh, various conditions as well. The next type of container is um, dictionaries. A dictionary um, stores in Python a key value pair. And uh, this is similar to map in Java or an uh, object in JavaScript. So to create a dictionary with some keys and values in it already, I can do something like this. D equals cat is a key. Its um, value is cute. We have another key dog and its value is 40. So if I do print D cat, it's going to print the value um, of the key cat in this dictionary D. And I can also do um, 
uh, check whether cat the the key cat is in dictionary D or not. So this is going to print true if cat is in the dictionary um, D. And um, um, to add elements key value pairs to a dictionary, we can do this by saying D specify the key with big brackets and then give it the value. So now if we print D fish, this is going to print the value of fish which is wet. And if we try to print the value of a key that doesn't exist, then it should throw an error. And um, if we want to implement or use dictionaries in a way where if there is a key, we um, get the value of that key. But if there is not, we want to specify a default element, such as say, for example, NA, then we can um, um, use the get method in a dictionary to say, um, get me the value of this key and if it doesn't exist um, return an A as, um, as default. So since monkey is not a key that exists it's going to return an A whereas since fish is the key that we have it's going to return um, the value of the key fish. We can remove elements from a dictionary by using the del um, keyword and um, um, since fish is no longer a key, once we remove the, the key value pair fish, then now it should print um, an A because when we are trying to get fish, it's not, it doesn't find it. And it's going to replace um, uh, the error. Instead of giving an error, it replaces our output with an A. Iterating over dictionaries is, um, is similar to iterating over lists. Um, we can do, if we have a dictionary like this, say for example, um, a dictionary with person as value 2, cat as value 4, spider as value 8. Then I can do for each animal in dictionary number of legs equals um, the key. So this is going to return you, give you key of every element in the every key value pair in the dictionary. If I, within this loop, if I want to access the value of that key, I can simply pass it to the dictionary and return the, obtain the values and this will print every um, item um, in the list, uh, in, in the dictionary, every key in the dictionary with its corresponding value. And if we need to access the key value pairs together in a for loop so that we do not have to do, um, um, we do not have to write this extra line of code, then we can simply do um, D dot items. So this gives you key value pair for, um, um, for every um, uh, key, key value pair in the dictionary. And um, if we need, oftentimes we want the dictionary items to be sorted either by keys or either by values, then for that you will need to um, use the sorted keyword um, and uh, specify whether you want to um, sort the items by key, in which case you specify x0, or sort the, the dictionary by the values, um, in which case you specify x1. So um, the first one is going to sort them by the um, access the dictionary sorted by the keys A, B, C, D. They appear in order. And the second one will sort them by their values. So these are sorted by the values 1, 2, 4, 6, 1, 2, 4, 10. Um, dictionary comprehension, similar to how we can do uh, list comprehension, we can also do dictionary comprehension. In other words, say, for example, if we want to... Uh, um, if we want to create say a dictionary where um, my second um, my value of the um, keys in the dictionary are the squares of the keys then I can simply say for each key the value will be x square and then um, this way you can specify um, for all items in numbers and also provide the condition so this is going to give a dictionary where we have keys where the keys are even numbers and we have values as the squares of those numbers. In this case, we have um, 0, 0, another key would be 2 with this value as 4 and another key would be 4 with value as 16. This is also something that's very important um, if you're writing code that um, needs to run faster. 
Um, here's a question. Uh, why do we need dictionary comprehension? We can definitely write this code um, with, uh, with a for loop and, uh, and, and write a more understandable, readable code, but dictionary comprehension runs faster. So that's why we need um, dictionary comprehension. The next type of container is sets. And um, unlike um, list, um, a set is an unordered collection of distinct elements. So um, that's that's very um, important about set is that order is not um, um, involved with, with sets. What this also means is you can't have multiple items that have the um, same, um, like in you know, the same element, multiple um, elements with the, with the same content. Say for example, if I create a set animals with uh, these um, uh, quarter brackets and I insert cat two times or I add cat two times, then the set is only going to have one cat because it is a set. You can't have um, multiple items that, um, that, that have the same value. Um, so um, if we, um, if we have a list, let's say that has um, cat, dog, and cat, which um, has three elements in it, then it's going to print all the three elements. We can convert a list to a set by simply using the set keyword, and you um, you you pass the uh, you you pass the um, list as input to this um, set um, method, and uh, it's going to return you um, a set that is a conversion of the list. In other words, duplicate elements will be removed from the set and the order is destroyed. And um, adding elements to um, a set is pretty easy. You simply use the add function, add method, and um, um, also you can check if something exists in a set or not by using the in keyword, and then length of a set can be um, calculated by using the len keyword, the len method. Um, so, um, and, and removing element from a uh, list um, um, can be done using the remove keyword. If you try to add something to a list that already exists, then it does nothing. It's four o'clock. Iterating over a set has the same syntax as iterating over a list. If we want the, say for example, ID and the element, um, elements in the set at the same time we can use the enumerate method and that returns the um, ID and um, the element um, content or element object or element variable at the same time so this is going to print the index and um, once again what's important to remember is that this is not an ordered list so uh, your your order um, of elements could be anything and uh, just like list comprehension and dictionary comprehension, we can also do set comprehension. We can easily construct um, new sets by using set comprehension. For example, um, if I wanted to compute the squares, uh, square root of all numbers uh, between um, all numbers ranging from 0 to 29, then I can use this to say convert all the numbers, um, all the square roots of numbers between uh, numbers from 0 to 29 into int. <coughs> now the actual number of elements that this returns is is um, is um, is 29 is 30 numbers but since we're trying to convert this to a set using the parenthesis this um, returns only um, five numbers. So if I replace this with a list then it should give me um, 30 numbers um, that um, are square roots of numbers ranging from 0 to 29 converted to int. Um, tuple is um, an ordered list of values and it's immutable which means that we can't change the contents of the tuple once it's created. And uh, tuple is in many ways similar to a list but one of the one of the most important difference is that um, Tuples can be used as keys in, in dictionaries um, and as elements of set while, um, while lists cannot be. In other words, um, if I have a pair of numbers, let's say 5 and 6, written this way with um, a parenthesis, uh, this is a tuple. This is an ordered pair that is a tuple and I can use this as a key to a dictionary and I can also use it as an element in a set. Say for example, I would like to create a dictionary whose keys are tuples 
with numbers um, such that the second number is one bigger than the first number. So in this case, for x in range um, 10, which means we are going from 0 all the way to 9, I'm going to create a dictionary which has 0, 1 as the key and 0 as its value, 1, 2 as the key and um, um, 1 as the value, 2, 3 as the key and 2 as the value, and so on. So this will print a dictionary that has those keys and values. And I'm going to create a tuple that is um, um, that is 5, 6. So this is a ordered pair T. And uh, if I print its type, it's going to say that it's, it's, uh, it's an ordered pair um, of, 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 uh, and it, it's a type tuple. So I can access the value of this, um, in this dictionary, I can access the value of the key t. In other words, I can access the value of this key 5, 6, which is an order pair. In this case, the, the value is going to be 5 because that's how we created the dictionary. We can also print the content of, um, um, print the value of um, this key 1, 2, which is going to be 1. So it, it prints that the type of this data type is uh, is tuple, and uh, here's the dictionary that it created, uh, that that we created, and um, uh, printing the value in the dictionary where the key is uh, five comma six gives you five. Now something that's very unique about tuples is that um, tuples are immutable. In other words, once you create a tuple like this, this ordered pair like this, you can't change the the items or access. Um, you you can't update the individual um, items in your in your ordered pair. So this would throw an error. Um, the next topic is functions. Python functions are defined using the def keyboard. Um, that means that um, for every uh, function that you define, you have to start with the keyword def. Then you specify the name of the function and then the uh, parameters that the function receives. In this case, this function only has one parameter, um, that is x. This function, it simply checks the value of x. If it is more than 0, returns positive. Less than 0, returns negative. Otherwise, returns a 0, returns um, the string 0. So if we call this function uh, with minus 1, 0, and 1 as input, it's going to print negative 0 and positive. Now, what's very handy with um, uh, functions in Python is that we will often define, we can, have, we can define functions to have an optional um, keyword argument. So um, you can design parameters such that sometimes um, if you don't provide arguments, if you pr don't provide input to those parameters, then um, um, Python by default assumes um, default um, values. Say for example, I want to create um, a method hello uh, its input argument is a name, and um, um, it has a second um, parameter, um, um, loud, which is by default false. In other words, if I specify loud as true, then it's going to, um, if I um, call this function with loud as true, then it's going to take that input. Otherwise, it's going to assume that loud is always false. So this function, um, prints um, um, hello in capital letters if um, loud is true, otherwise it prints um, um, hello in, in lowercase letters. So if I don't specify the second parameter, it's always going to um, print hello in lower, um, lower um, characters. So I've defined the function, and uh, if I call the function without any parameters, it will throw an error because the name is a required parameter in this function. So this will obviously throw an error. If I call the method hello with Fred and not specify the second parameter um, loud, uh, then it's going to um, assume that loud is false and print hello in lowercase. Now, if I explicitly specify the second parameter loud, then um, it's going to print um, um, the, the name in all in capital letters. Now, here's the question. What's wrong with the following functions arguments? So say, for example, instead of um, um, writing the argument name as the first argument, I want to use the name as a second argument and use loud as the first argument so that the default parameter is still false for loud. What's wrong with this um, setting? 
What's wrong with this is when calling this function, there is no way I can specify that the default value of loud is false. In other words, if I call um, the method hello with some name as, as input argument, then it's going to understand that the first argument that I provide is um, for loud, right? So that's why all the arguments that have default values will need to go at the end of your list of arguments. So um, the correct way, so this will not run. Um, the correct way to write this will be put all the arguments where you don't have default parameters first, followed by the arguments where you have default parameters defined. The next topic is um, classes. All classes um, create objects, just like any other programming language, and all objects contain characteristics called attributes. Um, and uh, in Python, what's very special is first argument of a method is always self, and this is just a convention. The name self, S-E-L-F, does not absolutely have any specific meaning. If we want to create a class, say, called A, we start with the um, keyword class, and then end with a column and um, we um, uh, say define a function um, called print something inside the class and it's going to um, um, just print something on the screen. Now all methods need to have this self as a default parameter um, um, default parameter of the methods. Um, we can similarly create um, um, actual larger classes that have um, certain variables within them and we can also design constructors by using the underscore underscore init underscore underscore method. And once again, this also receives self as input. Uh, if we have a constructor like this, then this means that when, um, when um, um, say for example, um, um, creating objects of this class greater, we will need to supply name as the, as the, as the, um, initialization to create the objects of this class right and then this assigns whatever parameter name um, comes with to um, the um, variable or to this attribute of the class creator so this name and this name are different because um, this name is what you supply the variable that holds what you supply when creating the object of the class and doing self dot name equals name assigns the content of the name that you provide into this attribute of the um, of, of the of the class and um, you can have other regular methods um, say for example a method called grid that um, doesn't take any argument necessarily this optional argument loud as input so um, I can um, create objects from this um, class by passing uh, default name as a uh, passing any name as the uh, um, input to the constructor this creates an object called z and then I can um, call z dot grid by um, um, not necessarily specifying the loud parameter if I don't specify the loud parameter it's going to print hello in in lowercase and if I specify um, the loud parameter and call the grid method it's going to print hello in in capital um, well, we got that error because we didn't define the class at the first place, so we define the class. Now that we have the class, we can create objects and print the contents.